If you asked me three years ago if I'd be in Montana playing baseball again, um, you know, I'd probably say no. And then if you told me I did, I was going to, I'd probably like cry happy tears. I'm Carl Blum. I'm from Toms River, New Jersey, big baseball town back in Jersey. I am really proud to say we won the short conference when I was in high school, um, 2013. And then I went on to play at Duke for four years, Rutgers for one year, a little bit in the Frontier League. Then I retired, started working for a while, and now I'm here in Missoula. It was a no-brainer for us to, to bring him in because I love that type of story where you're away from the game, you're doing something else, you figure out that you still have it, you know, and his story is pretty cool. I mean, he, 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 he figured out he had it again at an alumni game. I always did want to keep throwing baseballs around and, and stay in it, but when you're living in, you know, downtown Manhattan, that's a really hard thing to do. The pandemic happened. Um, I moved home with uh, my parents, had green grass to go out and, and hang out in, uh, had my brother to play catch with, and uh, I just started throwing the baseball again. My dad actually built me a mound when he saw me throwing again. Uh, it, it, it was really funny, like within 24 hours of him seeing me play catch again, um, he went and built me a mound and it was sitting in the garage so that I could get on it and, and uh, you know, get proper training. But yeah, I mean, to me, like I thought, will I ever play again? Only if I thought I was better than I ever was. So I got the radar gun out and at first it was like 88, you know, which is pretty good for not playing in so long. But I knew in my head, like it needed to be 95, it needed to be 96, it needed to be 97 for me to stop my job and go play. And I think that that actually kind of motivated me where I was like, if you're gonna, get a chance to go play again, you gotta work really hard. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. If they've decided to jump back into this lifestyle and this type of, of job, you know, you've gotta love it. Obviously, you know, the pay is not great. Um, you know, it's not the big leagues, but they wanna play and they're playing for the love of the game and they're playing to try to, try to make it. I kinda thought I was crazy, you know. Uh, having played in five years, I have this really comfortable job. My life is going in the, in the, in the right direction, a lot of people would say. And uh, now I'm taking a, a massive pay cut and uh, moving out to Montana to do something I love. You know, I think a lot of people would say that that's awesome, but a lot of people might be skeptical of that behavior to be, you know, completely honest. So it's, it's giving me a completely different perspective on coming to the park every day. Like simple thing like shagging BP, I used to hate, but now just being out here on the field with a group of guys, playing a game. I don't take that for granted anymore. And I think the other thing too is, I used to have a lot of stress and anxiety about trying to perform. And now I, I just kind of see it as like a great opportunity to be here day by day. It's easier to be in the moment. And you know, I don't, I don't know how much longer this is gonna go for me. It's ended once for me and it's gonna end again for me sometime probably soon. I'm, I'm 27 years old, you can't play this game forever. So yeah, I think it's, it's just really helped me be in the moment and go day by day. In some cases, maybe, you know, they're just here trying to punch a clock, so to speak, but not here, not on this team. These guys are the ones especially that have had a year, had two years, had three years. Um, they realize how much they love the game. I think that's what it does. It brings them back to, I play the game because I love the game and because I've been away from it. And so it's a neat perspective they bring. I definitely want to play in the big leagues and it sounds crazy, but you know, why not? I, you know set the highest goals and, and, and try and strive for them. Um, but truth is that, you know, I know the reality of my situation. And for me, like, I, I'm not gonna contradict myself. I just said I'm living in the moment and I'm blessed to be here in Missoula right now, playing for a awesome coach, a great ownership, and next to a lot of really cool dudes. So I'm just gonna soak that in right now and, and uh, try and rack up the, the win column this, this summer here in Missoula. You know, we won the whole thing in 21, runner up last year, you know, good start this year, but it's an interesting kind of dynamic here where you do play for yourself in regards of you want to make it back and you want to play in the big leagues and you want to show scouts what you can do, but it's not only about that. You know, in a lot of the minor leagues, that's what it's about when you're playing for affiliated clubs, major league teams, you know, it's about, all right, I got to move up. I got to go single A, double A, triple A, you know, what can I do? for that. This has that element in that they don't want to be an independent ball forever, but it also breeds itself to, 
you know, they're playing for the team. You know, it's about more than us. It's about the team. You know, the fans show up and the community rallies around us, which, you know, I think a lot of guys that haven't been here before see is how cool that is. And they're here to see you. And, and so it allows them to both play for themselves, but it includes that element of selflessness because it is about everyone else. You can tell that the Paddleheads mean something to this town. You can tell that fun is a priority here in Missoula. And yeah, I, I wasn't really expecting it, but was super pleasantly surprised by the turnout and uh, the unique take that the Paddleheads have on putting on a show. If their name comes across my desk, I'll, I'll look at stats. I mean, he's a mid-90s guy, he blows it by people, but it's certainly not the highest thing on my list. I would say number one is character. I spend between three, four days in a week, or more sometimes on each guy, making sure that I get a full report on who they are, what they're about, so that I make sure that they fit what we're doing here. And everyone that said he was going to be a leader, said he was gonna be great for the clubhouse, for the culture, has been spot on. And that's what he's done. He immediately took to the bullpen guys. He immediately took to the clubhouse, and, and he's, he's a leader, you know? You can see it, and I think Part of that's the maturity level, he's a little older. He's been around and then he stepped away and then he's back and, and that helps. I mean, anytime you have life perspective, you know, real life perspective outside of baseball and you bring it in to what matters, that helps the younger guys that haven't maybe lived that yet. I've been lucky to be a part of some like winning programs and winning cultures with like good leaders. And there's been some through lines through all of them. Competitiveness, like just being tough dudes and, and loving to compete and not backing down. And it sounds kind of corny, but uh, trust and love, like whether it's a baseball team or a family or, you know, a company, when there's like authentic trust and, and uh, the people care about each other on that, on that unit, I just think it goes a lot further. So, uh, you know, if you can find those things in a team, that's super powerful, I think. But yeah, I think the more mature you get, the more you're away from the game, the more you realize that in life you need those qualities. You can't just be about yourself. You know, it, it spills over to the game. And, and it goes both ways too. The young guys are gonna learn that here. They're gonna learn you play for each other. And then whenever baseball's over, because it is over for everyone at a certain point, when that's done, you're gonna need those same qualities off the field too. I was shattered when baseball ended for me. I was having nightmares. Like it was like I very much identified with being a baseball player, and now I had this job that I did love, um, and I should have been happier, but I wasn't happy for a period of time at least because I completely identified as a baseball player. I saw myself playing for way longer than I ended up playing, and uh, it was something I had to deal with. But you know that's part of maturity, and I think that uh, you know you can turn something sad into something good. Um, you know, you can acknowledge the, the bad and the misfortune without, you know, throwing away all of the lessons and all of the good memories. And yeah, for me, like it took a little bit, but I think I was definitely able to, to channel all the good parts about being a baseball player and then, uh, you know, take it, take it into the real world for sure. What we do is give guys that opportunity to come back. Um, and then when the Major League Scouts see them, they sign them out of here. I mean, I'm still playing baseball at, at 27 years old, A, because I love it, but the truth is that if I didn't think that I could potentially play at the highest level, then I wouldn't be here in Montana, you know? Um, I'd probably be back in New Jersey playing in a men's league and, and focusing a lot more on my job. But I think now with that freedom that I'm allowing myself to have, plus the, the hard work that I put in, you know, who knows what can happen.